Hello vinyl lovers, Uncle Rodis back again. I'm in my work clothes today. I've just got home from uh, the morning's work. It's just um, after lunch here. <clears throat> Late November. Uh, big pile of records that have come in over the last, well since my first last video which was the start of the month. So yeah, things are still happening, still moving pretty quickly but um, it's about to change. But I've got some nice Christmas ones coming that my lovely wife is buying for me. So they'll, they'll be coming up after the new year and that. But anyway... This one up first, pitch black. Um, so New Zealand sort of electronica. Um, this isn't high octane stuff. This is more ambient, low, uh, low tempo um, doodling. But it's really nice. It's good. I, I actually had their first CD. I've had it for many years. This is a reissue of their second LP, double LP. Um, this is the first time on vinyl. Um, Electronomicon. It's a nice gatefold, as you can see there. Um, pretty cool. Uh, I'll get back to those. Um, bit of heavy metal this month. Stalker's new LP just came out uh, a few days ago. Um, I've only ever played it twice, but I have actually have the I downloaded it off Bandcamp after I bought it. And have been listening to it that way, and it's been really good. Um, kind of speed metal, I suppose. It's, it's kind of like a cross between Metallica and Iron Maiden. So the vocals, the guy, the guy's sort of trying to do a bit of Iron Maiden, but he does a lot of high pitch stuff as well, which is quite interesting. So it gets a bit wild in places. Not the growly sort of vocals for the death metally type stuff, but um, yeah, pretty cool. Again, it's a it's a um, just a single LP, but it's a gatefold, so it's quite cool. Um, this one here is a new one out by another band who are fairly new, I think, on the scene, Bad Hagrid and the Planet of the Androgenites. Now, I'm not sure if that's actually the name of the band in full or the, and the Planet of the Androgenites is the name of the record, but probably not. So, yeah. Um, this actually has kind of commercial potential, but it's still alternative. So that's, um, now I did describe it to someone. Some great singing on here. The guy's very soulful voice and some nice guitar work. I, I've only actually played it the once. I haven't had a chance to get through it because I've got so much happening, so many other things happening. And um, this has only been played a couple of times so far. This is the new album by the Bats. Sorry, I'll tilt that a bit. It's still got the the, the shrink wrap on it. Um, Foothills. There. What does this say? This was about their tenth album or something in forty years. So they're not hugely prolific but you know this is the second new one they've done in about the last four or five years uh standard bat stuff really good really nice uh this is something new out again so i think i mentioned in my other video about the um the the uh band camp where I, how i found out to find out <clears throat> vinyl releases by tagging band camp tags and finding out which ones are on vinyl and i've been picking up a few and this is another one um Ao aoturoa which is sort of like aot aoturoa is a maori name for new zealand but this is ao this is a aoturo turoa so it's a bit shortened version but just a, a single guy called tom scrouse um real mix of stuff on here too uh couple of really good ambient sort of electronic ambient sort of tracks um and then there's some more sort of different stuff uh god i can't even remember now what the other tracks are like I've, again so much records coming in i haven't had a lot of chance to listen to it i need to download that and put it on my phone and have a, a bit more of a listen more heavy metal the void from 3000 ad this is on total metal records out of check Czechoslovakia or something like that. Um, this is number 48 of a limited edition, I believe, of 100. Now, there were f it says on Bandcamp there were 50 available here for New Zealand, I think. And then they, the rest are available, um, I think, on Discogs. Someone said they picked up a copy off Discogs. So, um, yeah, more heavy metal. This is more classic metal. Some good tracks on here. The first track... 3000 AD, it's got a real Faith No More feel to it, actually. It's um, pretty cool. Um, this is from my hometown of Christchurch, so really cool. It's not a gatefold, that one. Um, 
this one here has just arrived uh, yesterday. Might just leave it in the shrink wrap, in the wrap. Um, right, so Wawa Records are doing some fantastic New Zealand releases of very hard to get records. And uh, I think I showed, well, I did show the Underdog's second LP several weeks ago. And finally, this one has come out. They were, I thought they were going to be released in one go because that was when I picked up the two farmyards. But anyway, this finally has shown up. Uh, so originally released in 1969. Um, this is a blues LP, blues rock, um, very bluesy, with a lot of cover versions by um, Elmore James and, and um, uh, there's a John Mayall song and all sorts of stuff. There's only three originals on here. It hasn't got the, the famous single that they put out before this. There's about They put out about three singles before this LP. There's only a, there's only a trio. No, sorry, four? There's four piece. Um, they, they, they shrunk to a trio for the next LP. There's only one guy on this record who plays on their next record, and it's quite different. It's more psyche. The next record is, again, another cult classic in New Zealand. Very hard to get originals. You know, you're paying well into the three figures. Um, four or five hundred bucks maybe if you can find a copy so um, good to have those reissued but to be honest they're not they're not as good as they've hyped them up to be I reckon right I'm sure many people are familiar with this series of Soul Jazz Records compilations and the um, I'm not even going to try and pronounce that Deutsch electronic something or other music um, but anyway, I think most of us know what this is, and this is volume four, just come out, and I'd been sort of, I knew about these for a while, and I kind of had hummed and hard about it, and I never really got around to actually picking them up, and then this came out, and I thought, oh, and I actually saw it for a pretty good price, actually, it was a triple LP, I picked up for 65 bucks, that's, in New Zealand, that's a pretty good price, um, and yeah, I'm really impressed with it, um, you know, lots of German... Um, stuff. I like the fact that this mixes it all up. It's not just all rock stuff. There's some electronic stuff and some more ambient sounding stuff. I mean, you know, and of course we've got stuff like um, Rodellis and um, oh, what's her name? Harmonium. Harmonia. Yeah, and that. And then there's Kraus. Klaus Weiss is quite cool. I like his electronics. There's a fantastic track from Agitation Free um, and Virus also. Really good track. So, um, I kind of like got all excited about that and decided to see if I can track down some of the others. And like I say, I knew about them and they've been around for a while, but they're actually getting harder to get. And I managed to find some in New Zealand for, for um, reasonably good prices. So I picked this one up. This has only just arrived today. Uh, clusters on this, Amon Dol, Pupu Vol, Tangerine Dream, you know, some of the big names, Can, of course. So really, this is this is record B of the first volume. Um so there's another double LP set that I need to get, um, and then there's volume two, which has two record, two record sets, and then there's volume three, which is like volume four, a triple record. Um, again, just arrived today. Got this for um, even cheaper than the, the volume four. Actually, I paid out less than fifty dollars for this, so I'm really wrapped about that. Um, yeah, so some new cluster on this one. You have some of the same names again. So this is going to keep me. Um, pretty busy for a while I think and I'll keep an eye out for the other ones but I have it I have exhausted most of the possibilities within New Zealand that I'm aware of at the moment for getting um, reasonably priced copies there are some copies of this stuff around for bit, over 70 bucks anyway so yesterday I got into town uh, and uh, had some chores to do finished work just after lunch and shot into town to pick up some gear and do some things and pick up some clothes because I need new shorts for summer, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, got to Penny Lane. So I spent over an hour at Penny Lane and actually the pickings were a little bit slim. All the, they had some really good stuff coming um, into their new arrival bins a couple of weeks ago, but of course I just haven't been able to get into town to have a look. And um, so they, most of that was gone. But I found this. Now this is interesting. So Caravan, I'm sort of always on the lookout for their stuff. It doesn't turn up that often, um, but not at hugely expensive when they do turn up. Uh, and anyway, this turned up, and it turns out that this is their, um, was it their second LP? If I could do it all over again, I'd do it all over you. But this is a very different cover from what's the original, um, well, I don't know, I guess the US and the UK version. Turns out this is a French version. Um, on 
Motors Records. Anyway, so looking on Discogs, uh, this is actually a third pressing or a reissue from 1975, but the other two did have the same covers. The only variants that basically were the uh, colour of the label of the record. Um, so that's cool. That was in pretty good nick. Um, and then I picked up this one, which I've been... Um, was not the one I actually wanted from them, but uh, on one of the uncut CDs that my wife got out of the library last earlier this year, there were some fantastic... Um, new records that I, uh, songs I heard from some stuff people, and Garcia's People was one of the tracks that it was really impressed me big time. That album I haven't been able to lay my hands on within New Zealand um, in, in vinyl format, but this one was in the bins yesterday, and apparently this is their latest, I think, from 2020, earlier this year, uh, Nightcap at Wits End. So... Now, first listen, there isn't anything outstanding like that track that really blew me away, that got me onto them to start with, but this is a strong album, and I think it's going to grow on me. Um, yeah, it's just indie, kind of rocky, you know, there's some nice and nice stuff happening on here. And there's a guy called Pat Gubler, who I think is in PG6, according to this. Um, I'm familiar with PG6. So this is quite new to me. Um, though I don't often buy new music like that, but um, I'm really, you know, there, there, was a, there were several uncut tracks on those that I'm looking out for if they happen to turn up. I actually bought that Duran Jones record like that. <clears> there <throat> was another one, but again, I couldn't find the actual album I wanted in New Zealand without having to bloody pay big prices to get it here via mail. But anyway, Record Store Day release. This was still sitting in the bins. It hadn't been sold. So everyone knows what this is. Songs for Drella from, Nick, uh, from Lou Reed and, and um, John Cale. So 30th anniversary edition, a double LP with three sides and an, a pretty cool looking etching on side four. I had a listen to this last night. The fidelity is fantastic. I did have an original on vinyl of this back in the day, and of course that went with the rest of my vinyl when I sold it, and I never wrote around to replacing it. So uh, I did jump on this. I saw it there. I, you know, I was humming and humming. It's it? It a bit pricey. I mean, it's $70, man. That's a lot of money. But it is a fantastic record. And then finally, now this was this one's a bit of it was a bit of a not so much a blind buy. Well, it wasn't. It wasn't. I didn't know what I was looking at, but I picked it up. It's called Your Victorian Breasts. Now it's a various artist compilation, so that was why I picked it up because it was a compilation, and I was curious. And I was just having a look at the track list, and on side two. Track two is a song by our very own Alistair Galbraith. And I thought, hey, wow, that's cool. So that really got me interested. And so I um, had a look at it and then didn't recognize any of the other people on it. So I had a quick flick on the turntable in the shop and a couple of tracks I listened to sounded pretty droney sounding, which, which you know, makes sense when you've got a compilation with Alistair Galbraith on it. So, yeah, got it home and uh, did a little bit more research on Discogs, found out that it is a limited edition compilation out of Sweden from 2013 or 12. Um, I have number 192 of 650 copies here numbered. Um, yeah, most, again, okay, there are a couple of names who are linked. Uh, William Tyler is a name I was familiar with, actually, and, and another couple of names, I can't remember which ones, which are linked to more well-known indie rock or rock bands. But this is more experimental. So, there's some folksy kind of alternative folk and alternative bluesy sort of stuff. And there's some droney ambient stuff going on. There's, there's quite a mix of stuff. Really good. Really good. So, yeah, I always like that. I was into that sort of stuff. It is a double LP gatefold. Um, really good, Nick. So that was that's my lot. That's a big bunch of uh, November's arrivals. And uh, I've still got a few more in the mail. And then Christmas time and birthday coming up. So, yeah. See you next time. Cheers.